Now we're going to the evolutionary part. All right. Anyway, okay. covering what I did about science, evolution, biological evolution, because evolution as a whole is a term used to, de used to describe, in essence, change. The process of how things change. How gradually or rapidly things change varies according to the according to the subject matter, but it turns out pretty much that everything in the universe evolves in some fashion. The universe itself, we have found, is changing. Hmm. Galaxies are moving away from one another. Stars are being born, growing older, and dying. We've seen supernovas, we've seen planetary novas, we've seen things go to red giants, we've seen stars being born, we've seen planets being made. This should go, by the way, against the idiot, which we're going to be talking about that toward the end of this, the idiot who came out with that 100 reasons why evolution is stupid. One of the things he came up with was when he said that we've never seen stars pop up. Um, yeah, we have. We have. We've seen pictures of stars being born. We've seen evidence or, of stars. We've seen evidence of stars dying. In fact, you know what really burns me up about this? This guy obviously preys on the stupidity of Americans because just a couple of nights ago, there was a special on Nova where they were talking about black holes and how stars were forming and being destroyed and new ones were forming up. This is on freaking television, okay? Now, television, granted, is full of garbage, but. There's scientific programs on there too. NOVA right there is talking about, and scientists talking about how they've seen stars develop, how they change from one form to another, and yet here's this one evangelist saying that, oh, we don't see, the stars aren't shown to grow, and we don't see that happening. And he supposedly taught biology for 15 years. I feel sorry for those kids. But yeah, even our own one. sun we see constantly change. Its life cycle is, it's in the middle of its, li of its main life cycle right now, so we're not going to see it go to Red Giant. Unless we somehow miraculously survive another five million, uh, another five billion years, <laughs> which if we do, will be so so vastly changed, we won't be us anymore. But and hopefully we won't be here anymore. But or at least not solely here. I would hope by that time we develop spaceflight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, if we haven't, we deserve to have died out. But <laughs> um, but. Um, even on the surface of the sun and the corona of the sun, we see that constantly changing. Sunspots, flares, all that stuff like that. The, the sun is a boiling cauldron of fire <laughs> and a fiery plasma. And it's fascinating. It's actually more fascinating to think about what it is in reality than any romanticized notions. So just to... Um for somebody who might be confused on exactly what evolution is, one of the things I guess we need to talk about first is what evolution isn't. Um, one of the beliefs that people believe is that evolution is the theory that new things just spring up from old things, almost instantaneously. Now this is a deceptive term. First of all, if, if you're going to be using it in, a, in, a, in its literal sense, it's completely wrong. If you want to use it more in a sense of if you're going to be talking about on a galactic scale or on a cosmic scale, then yeah, it does happen instantaneously. If you're going to be talking more on a lifespan scale, well then that's subjective because human life, we live longer than gnats and flies and insects and all that. So you kind of have to be careful when you're using terms like gradual or rapid or immediate because depending on what scale you're talking about, it could be instantaneous or it could be gradual. Yeah, compared to the lifespan of the sun, say, it's instantaneous change. Compared to the lifespan of a human, it's so slow as to not even be noticeable. So the best definition I can give, and correct me if I'm wrong, the simplest ex scientific explanation for what evolution really is, biological evolution now. Because if you're just simply saying plain old evolution, then you're talking about change, period. If we're going to be talking about biological evolution, in the simplest way I can put it, and I'm not sure if I'm being correct on this, all it really is is the process of change from one generation to the next. DNA change, biological change, cell change, any type of difference that is able to be passed on through genes from one set to its offspring. That's evolution. Now it's the process of that as it keeps going with each generation, each generation, each generation, data change, data change, data change, data change, there is a chance that you will end up with something different from what started from before. That's all evolution is saying. That's it. Now, I've heard a lot of people say that there's no proof for evolution. Well, as I mentioned earlier, there's no proof 
for any scientific theory. There's no proof for gravity. There's no proof for electromagnetism. There's no proof for any of that stuff. There is what passes for proof in science is that it meets all the evidence and it describes it in the simplest way that meets all the evidence. That it, it, that fully explains what's going on and fully a, a, and fully explains all of the various quirks and things like that. Um, at, at, as I was saying, things constantly change. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of scientific theories and proof, and that concept of proof, biological evolution is the single most proven and most tested scientific theory in all of science. Gravity hasn't been tested as often. <laughs> Electromagnetism hasn't been tested as often. As often. Quantum theory and all of its intricacies hasn't been tested as often. Because of its controversial nature, evolution has been tested nearly constantly. <laughs> and every single time a credible scientist comes up with a good scientific test to try to disprove evolution, it fails. Every single time, it fails. It, likewise, any time a, a quack on either a not quite credible scientist tries to prove evolution, they fail. Because you can't prove anything in real science. You can disprove in real science, but you can't prove anything in real science. And another thing, you can't disprove an entire theory. You can disprove individual aspects of a postulate or a theory based on what hypothesis you're trying to test. So anybody who says that they can disprove the entire theory is wrong. Not only that's wrong, not but they know shit about science. That's not the way science works. See, the, if, excuse me for this, but here's the thing that kind of gets me. The best way you can describe the theories of science, the scientific method, you got to remember something, people. Every now and then, humans forget that they don't know shit about the world they're living in, much less the universe they're living in. What scientists try to do is figure out, well, how does this work? Or better yet, even though we can't possibly know everything there is to know about such a thing, how can we at least come up with some kind of model or some kind of equation or just some type of box to put it in so that we can work with it? And this mechanism that we use to work with it make it as close to the truth as possible. That's pretty much why they call it a theory and not a straight up fact. It's like, that, for example, with evolution and the data that's working with that, or, you know, it was easier for me to make an example with gravity because I don't really know too much. Maybe you can fill that in on the tests that have been done on evolution or things that have been done. But as far as gravity goes, it's like, okay, how do we work with the fact that everything, what's the model we can come up with in our heads or what we can use to figure out how come we're all stuck on this planet so we can work with this energy or work with this process. Now again, it's called the theory of gravity, and as he pointed out, it's been revised over the years and some parts completely thrown out because it turns out, well, this model is wrong, so we need to fix it. And by the way, that's something else that should let you know if it's a scientific method or not. There seems to be a difference between the scientist and the fanatic, which sooner or later we're going to be talking about the creationist because quite frankly, it burns me up that they consider that a scientific theory. It's not. Um, the difference between a fanatic and a scientist is that at the end of the day, if somebody shows the scientist, no, this is completely wrong and we can prove it, and they've proven it, then the scientist will go, oh, snap, well, back to the drawing board, let's go and see if we can fit. Instantly, they're like, well, we got to put this in, this has been proven. If you go to a fanatic and show them, no, this makes absolutely no sense, or no, you don't know what the hell you're talking about, they will not go, oh, you're right. It's, instead, they go, no, 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 this is BS, it's BS, you, you don't know what I'm talking about. They'll just go nuts because they're not working off of facts. They're working off of belief. It is easy to change your mind when you're dealing with a fact. It is not so easy to change your mind when you're dealing with a belief. That should be your barometer to test somebody's qualifications on a so-called theory. If they go ape shit on you when you can actually, and what I mean by actually really prove, through the scientific method that something is wrong and they go ape shit on you instead of going, huh, interesting. You're dealing with somebody with an agenda and who possibly has no freaking clue what the scientific method is. 
Yeah. Mm. Where is our, uh, make a break? <coughs> okay, yeah, we'll make a break here.